Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, yes, today I'm going to make a uh, yes, kind of tutorial. Well, I wouldn't call it a tutorial or how-to video because um, this always sounds like the way how I paint it the right way or it's the of official way or whatever or but um, well I would say it's just a way how I paint or how I mix skin tones I have no idea if this is this right or wrong <laughs> well but you guys ask so keep on your mind that it's just the way how I do it and uh, and I recommend that you should also yes experimenting with mixing and stuff okay the main color I'm always using for mixing skin tones is this um, raw sienna color but uh, you also can use a um, instead of this uh, another Archer tone like light Archer or Archer or whatever and I'm often mix it with a cold red a bluish red like um, carmine or magenta and yes and I'm always testing it before um, I apply it on my illustration I'm always testing it on a smear paper like here and uh, how much water I I mix with it if I want it lighter I use more water and if I want it darker I use less water and I always make the mixture when I want a light tone with red cheeks I make the skin tone a bit more yellowish that the contrast between skin and cheeks is good and yes I'm always mixing with a lot of water not with the white pigment this is very important a um, lot of a uh, lot of watercolor sets also have a Neapels yellow in a set set and also Schminke has a Neapels yellow in in the color palette but um, and it also looks like a skin tone but it has a white pigment and it really looks ugly painting skin tones with white pigments in my opinion because it it looks kind of muddy when you mix it and especially when you apply shadows later on it so I'm always mixing with uh, with just a lot of water and no white pigments I again generally avoid white pigments when I'm painting watercolors and here yes sorry for talking too much here I'm mixing a darker skin tone for my other girl I'm coloring today and here I'm using a brown as base um, and here I'm finding the right uh, measure between red and yellow um, I'm always I, I never yes sometimes I make the skin a bit more yellowish sometimes a bit more reddish um, most of the time I'm mixing with again with raw sienna or like Osha and here I also use a brown and a blue and yes almost all skin tones I'm always adding a bit blue not not much blue but a bit blue that the skin tones don't look uh, don't look too much orange when you just mixing a raw sienna and a dark red or blue bluish red sometimes the the color mixture looks a bit too much orange or the darker skin tone too so i'm adding a bit tiny bit of blue I wouldn't I wouldn't add uh, ultramarine because it's granulating and granulating on skin don't look nice <laughs> so I would use another blue and yes it makes the the color bit bit less orange or a bit less uh, vibrant so that it looks more natural 
And now I'm, uh, yes, I'm apply clear water on the dried skin because I now want to dab the red cheeks into the skin. You um, also can do this right after you make the skin tone in the wet, still wet skin tone, but it's really important that this that the color is still totally wet, not not started to dry. This is very important because when when the skin al already started to dry uh, and you dab color into it, the, it pushes the color away and you get these flowers, these round flowers. And so um, I almost wait until the first layer of skin is dry and then I apply clear water and dab the red into the clear water and make the cheeks like here and the the red spreads into the yes into the water and make the soft shadows like you see yeah maybe you have to to practice this a bit until you find out how it works i um it's uh, yes it's a bit um it needs a bit practice but with uh, yes you can always always take too much color away with a dry dabbed brush and yes and that if you need need more color you can dab a bit more pigments into the water but always keep in mind the it has to be the the surface has to be wet not too wet but also not shouldn't start it to dry yes this is very important and yes, here I'm adding a bit more cheek uh, red because I thought it's too not enough red. <laughs> so I apply again clear water on the face and dab a bit more red pigments into it. Yes, and yeah, as the first uh, when I recorded this video, I uh, I. Uh, I, I, I wanted to make it real time and talking while painting, but as always when I paint and talk, I stop stop painting when I talk. And so I decided to make it a bit faster and make talking as an off comment, like here in the off. And so I don't know what I'm talking here and well I think I'm mixing now the the shadow shadow color yes and I'm always using the rest of the skin tone for mixing shadow and then I use uh, yes I'm mixing how the color for shadows is always depends on what I want and what colors I'm using in general in this picture and when I'm using more warm colors, I almost use a cold, cold color for um, for shadows. And if I use more more cold colors, I'm using a more more warm lilac for shadows. And it's always uh, when I use I don't, that it goes well together with the outlines. So when I use a lilac for outlines, I almost use a lilac also for shadows. When I use a blue for, sh uh, for outlines, I often use a, use a more bluish tone for, for shadows. And here for the, for the light, lighter skin girl, I used a lilac as outlines. So I used more lilac for shadows and a very light lilac or violet um, and for the girl with the darker skin I used the dark blue for outlines and I used a more bluish bluish lilac gray for for the shadows here you see I'm mixing now the the shadow tone for for the girl for the, with the darker skin and I'm testing it over the swatches of the skin tone. You see that uh, I can see if it 
looks good on the skin tone. And this is very important, always testing, testing the mixture you did also with water. Sometimes I make two mixtures with a bit more water or with a bit less water. And, um, and before you apply it, you should also wait a bit until it's dry because color changes when it dries. So especially when you mix the skin tone, you should wait until the skin tone you mixed on the you mixed and tried out on the smear paper, you should wait until it's a bit dry that you can see how it looks. Well, and now I'm applying the shadows on the on the girl, and you see it's a bit darker than on the other. I'm always mixing different shadow tones for different skin tones, or, or also I'm mixing new skin uh, new shadow tones for. For, for other colors, so all colors, I'm, I'm, yes, for all colors I'm mixing different shadow tones. And sometimes I also use the, the color, I apply the, the shadow on, I also use this for the mixture, if something, some color I left over. Uh, it's left over. Oh, sorry, it's I. It's really difficult for me to explain my proce process. Not only because my English isn't that good. Uh, it's also because when I'm painting or drawing, I don't think much about what I'm doing. It just happens. It's 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 it happens automatically, and I don't think much about it. And so it's really really difficult to to explain it for you <laughs> and here you saw um, the the shadow and at the hair was a bit too dark in my in my for my taste and I could correct it a bit with a with a clear water and a brush and for correcting if you want to correct uh, or erase color from watercolor paper you should use a synthetic brush, not a real brush because it's not that soft. A synthetic br brush is harder than a uh, than a sable brush. A sable brush is often too soft for correcting. Yes. And um, sometimes correcting is not possible for <clears throat> uh, on some papers because uh, this really depends on the paper often. Some papers are really easy to correct so that sometimes it's really hard to layer because you always reactivate the layers underneath but um, on this paper you can really good layer but it's hard to correct. So. Well and you see I started now with the rest of the um, uh, surface to color the rest of the surface, the clothes, hair and other stuff. So I'm stop here. I hope it was my tips and tricks or, or things to avoid were a bit too bit helpful for you. I'm not sure. Um, as I said it's sometimes a bit difficult for me explaining what I'm doing and and it's maybe not a usual way how I'm doing this, uh, I don't know. But this is the way how I do it and sometimes I do it different, sometimes I'm, I love to experiment. So I really recommend that you also should do a lot of experiments and find your way how to apply colors. Sometimes maybe this way how I paint is not the right way for you, I don't know. But yes. Hope it was a bit helpful and not too boring and hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Hello, me again. <laughs> I forgot to say something um, because it has nothing to do with skin tone mixing or something. But uh, I know you will ask me so I thought I should answer it before you will ask. Um, the, the blue blue pen I used uh, for the pattern of the uh, fabric of the right girl was masking fluid filled up in an acrylic marker and you can uh, you can use a Molotov marker they 
have a masking fluid filled up in pans, but you can also make a mixture of masking fluid, uh, for example, by Schminke and mix it with water and fill it up in an empty acrylic marker. And this is what I did here. And um, yeah, and the, uh, I always use blue, uh, blue masking fluid because you, I can see where I applied. And this is something most people are confused because it's first blue and then it's white or something. Uh, so this is just what I wanted to say because I know you will ask about this. <laughs> uh, okay, then uh, bye.